This is part 13 for our point of sale system JavaScript. And in this part, basically what we're going to do is we're going to solve some issues that I've been uh, procrastinating probably for a while. And that is this one here. We have this button here and we have this one here that doesn't respond at all if we click on this. And what I want to do here is basically this. We have this here, but this option should only show or we should be able to press on checkout only if we have a value because right now we have this security here that we cannot press confirm unless the exact amount is here but if you put in here whatever oh there's right on nothing okay that's fine however it just doesn't make sense why would we be in here if there's absolutely nothing here we should not touch this checkout there must be there's absolutely no reason for that so we have this and then we can press on checkout here that's what we're going to work on and then we make sure that this only will work if this is has any so, sort of value and if you're going to remove something what we want to do we want to jump back to any other place or basically basically to the beginning here just to make sure so how are we going to do this well for that we need to work with the bootstrap navs and tabs so make sure you go to getbootstrap.com and we're going to scroll down here all at the bottom somewhere you will find the answer and the answer basically is not this one no let me double check where it is if i'm not mistaken it would be that one or this one here this is the one all right so what we're going to do is this and maybe you will not be able to grasp this don't worry i'm going to explain this let's go down here so basically what we want to do is very simple is this checkout button should respond as a tap button here so that's what we're going to do here we're going to make sure that we have this one working so for this let's search for this specific id name and i apparently i am here somewhere let's search for it it should be this one here the primary button checkout and it has no id at all that's all right all we need to do here is just basically on click so you can say here on click and then you can say here uh, checkout tab as function checkout tab or maybe uh, go to maybe that's it go to checkout tab very simple nothing fancy here but this basically should respond as that so go to grab this here and this will be our function so the moment we click on this we should respond like this here so i scroll down here and we go here somewhere and in this case i can just put it in can we put it in here? I'm not sure if I can put it in there. Let's put it down here. And the reason why I'm not sure is we might need to have this information here, meaning that it needs to be blank here or needs to understand if it's blank or not. So we're going to go down. I'll just put it here at the bottom. And then we say here, function is the go to checkout tab. And all we do here is we're going to grab almost all of this code here. So, but I'll just type it so you understand exactly what we're doing here. So we say constant. And let's say here, uh, first tab. First tab element, exactly the same what they're using. And then we say here the function. Because what are we really going to do here? We're going to grab basically the constant value of this tag, but tab button. Very important here. So we say here, document dot query selector. Very important that we use query selector here. Because we're not going to grab here a ID or a, um, uh, what is that, an ID of a specific button unless it has an ID. But I'm not sure about that. Let's see, do we have a button ID here? Well, apparently we do have, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, we can grab this one. I guess we can just do this one. That will be even easier. So let's see if this will work. So we say here, that makes it even easier. Then we don't, we can skip the other one. So we say document get element by ID. And all I want to grab is this specific ID item here. And what will happen eventually is this. Let me say here another constant. Let's say first tab. Then we say here we're going to create here a object. There's a new bootstrap dot tab. So this is specific bootstrap code that bootstrap library has. And then here we're going to grab the specific tab item or element which one is that that is basically this specific uh, button here we can just grab this one and put in here and then once we grab this what we want to do with this we want to say the following 
we'll say here this and then we say dot show very straightforward so if you look here back let's go here we have this basically it will show all the items and what will happen is the same with here we have the, all these options here show height etc this will show and everything else will eventually hide so let's save this now and see if this really works or maybe we need to change it to a query selector so refresh here i'm going to uh, go back here like that so we don't have the developer tab and press on this and you can see here now we're jumping back if i click on this you can see here everything goes nice so what I'm going to do here is now a cosmetic trick. And the reason why I'm doing this cosmetic trick is because we have here this ID. We have this ID specified, but what I want is to remove this. This button has no more value for us because we already have it here. We would, and we only want to play with this specific button here, but we don't want to delete the button. Because remember, if we delete it, we break basically this reference here. So we're not allowed to delete it. So I'm going to call this why I'm saying this is a cosmetic trick because we're going to hide that specific item. So uh, let's search for this specific ID. So I'm going to grab this ID here and I'm going to search for that and then enter and then we jump up automatically. In here, this entire list item could be hidden. So we say your D none. That's it. We don't delete it because we have we have to keep this reference alive or active. So now we refresh here and you can see here now the button has been remove but if i click on here we jump here nicely so this is very nice so now we're done basically with the first part but what we want to do next is to make sure that the checkout button here should only be active if there would be any kind of value here if the value or let's say the if there's no item selected this should not be able to click active because here you can see here you can also click active or you can do stuff although this will not work but that's all right you can see here this has no value so let's solve that one now all right so how are we going to do that now first of all we need to set this by default on disable and to do this we're going basically back to that item and i realized we should give it an id name because yes we didn't have it uh, we didn't assign an id name for that and now it's probably time for it so let's go look and search for this we, this is the checkout button so i'm going to search here for checkout there, there you are. This is the one it had the function. So I'm going to give this an ID. And let's say this is checkout. I'm not sure. Checkout button. And if I copy and paste this, all right, we have no other ID with that. So because I was scared that maybe we had another one as well. So we're going to copy this. And basically, we'll say here by default it is disabled. Disable, make sure you spell this correctly. So if I save this now and refresh, are we this is it disabled? Button disabled checkout. For some reason it is not disabled, alright. Because I didn't spell it correctly. Save, you can see it disabled. There you are. So it doesn't work here. What we want to do is we want to only enable this if we select this, and then this should be enabled. So let's start to work with it because that will mean that we need to use an intelligence level here or basically a reference or connection. It must recognize at the moment we have something in here. At that moment, it will uh, enable the button. So we're going down here and we go probably here at the bottom. And what I will do here is first of all, I'm going to create a function. Uh, we have the checkout button here. We have this. So let's say here function. And this function will be uh, enable or enable, well, enable like that, checkout button. And then in here, we're going to put in basically this checkout button. We can say here, this is the uh, ID, so we say constant this checkout button equals, and then we can say here document dot get element by id and then checkout button i have to to make sure do i have the id name exactly with caps locked or not i'm not sure about that you can see here all right the id name is including caps locks so then this is fine so we have this here and all we want to do here is we will enable this all right how will this will how will this be enabled basically we must have here a function this is a loop function where first of all 
by default, it will set it on disabled, and then it will check if there would be any kind of value in the array here, and then it will enable it. So we always set it as default as disabled. So we're going to say here, uh, checkout button, all right, and then we grab this, and then we say this, and then we say here, uh, disabled, and we say here, true. So that's the first one. Secondly, then we say here, if. And then we need to make here the if statement, and this if statement will say if any, basically anything in array, in that case, enable. So we say checkout button, disable, set on false. So we have this. So let's start to look here with this connection here. So we're going here, and let's look. We have the calculator inset, insert. Uh, what would be the best place to do it? Probably in this long one. We have the very extensive item here. If I'm not mistaken, it would be this one here. Every time we click, it will start to recognize something. Um, what we could do here is basically get the order array or the order ID array. Um, I would like to get the item array. I guess this would be the most suitable one. The item, is it the item name or item price? One or the other. Uh, let's or this is the item push can we get that one I think this one will be fine we can put in this here and all we want to do here basically is to check if there's a length so we go back here and then where is that specific function let me say here if order array um, dot length is bigger than zero so if the length is zero or be larger than zero, in that case, checkout button should be enabled. So this will be disabled, set on false. So if I save this now, let's double check if this works. So now it's this, if I select this, all right, it doesn't work yet. And the reason why it doesn't work is apparently we need to have here this direct connection. So I'm going to grab this enable button here, or this enable checkout button, and we're going to put it in this massive function here above. Uh, let's see this is the function console log I guess we can put it in here when we select on this and then we have here this total item array this is the total item I guess we can just put it in here for now so let's see confirm this refresh check there we are so now we can go to checkout and now we can select this all right of course we're not done because look what happened now if I click on this there you are, you can now check out again. We have here what we call a bug or a uh, loophole. So let's solve this specific bug or issue. So how do we solve this? Well, basically, we need to plug the plug here or the, uh, or the hole. So how are we going to do it? It's in the clear, but it's not really on the clear. Let me explain why. If I press on this and I click on that, it will work the same as clear. So that will mean that we need to have it two ways. First of all, if you delete anything, and if there's nothing anymore, then we need to do it, but also on clear. Basically, because we have a function always in a loop, where it by default always set on zero, or basically on disable by, by first checking it, or as a default setting, and then it will check with an if statement, we can just copy this. We can go here, and then we can search first of all for the clear function, and after we can search specifically for the delete item function. So let's look here at delete item. All right, this is the one probably we need. And let's see if I will put this one here. What will happen here? So if I select this, now I delete here. You can see here, this works nicely. But if I select this and I do clear, we still have here a open issue. So let's copy this as well. And let's look for the clear button. Where is the clear button? I just have to check the function because I can't remember anywhere what's the official function name on this specific button. It's order basket clear. All right, that's the one. So we're going to say here order basket clear. This is the function name. There we are. You can see here we have this. Let's put that in there. We can save that. Now refresh. Press this. Let's clear it. All right, we cannot click on it. Then we do this. Then we delete this. All right, we cannot click. Then we click. Let's do here. And then here, what happened now? Imagine this. We click on this and bam. We have an issue. What's the other issue here? Same issue here is that we haven't realized this specific item. So what we need to do here is 
not only do we clear it, like here, we need to jump back to the original item. So we are not able to push through anywhere else in this issue. So we're going to do the following, that the moment we have this, we need to push it back to this specific item. So how do we do this? Well, if we scroll down here, we had this uh, item here. We can go here to check, but then what I realized is what we could do as well. If we have this here, uh, we have that one, we can set this as set on disabled. What we could do here is very easy if this and uh, if what we could do here, I will just make another if. And basically, it will say if equals to zero. If equal to zero, we can set this on true. Well, it's already set on true here by default. But what I want to do here, basically jump to the things. But it must be only on zero. Uh, maybe we can do an if else that could be as well. But what I want to do here then basically is this one here. I'm going to say here first tab. We're going to set this as well. Here's the first step. We can copy all of this. And here I'm going to, again, explain what we're going to grab. So this disabled is already set in here. So we don't need this really. And I don't want to have this as a default in here because if not, we will always jump first back. We don't want that. So we say here the following. If this and this we are not allowed to use again. So I'm going to give you another name. So um, this would be here. Let's say full, full tap or back to full tap. Back to full tap. Yeah, and then all we need to do is figuring out what that is. And then we say here back to full tap is, oh, sorry, this one is not that. Yeah, that is correct. And then the first element would be, am I correct? Yeah, I, I need to just double check what I get here. This is the full tap or the first table element. All right, that's it. And it will be equal to that, yes, because these two are equal. And here, this is the item that will be matched with that. So, full tab, let's say here, full tab. All right, we got that. We have the full tab, show full tab. Why is this showing like that? I'm not expecting this to do like that. If I have full tab too, does it? Am I missing something here? Is a response like something else? It's all right. We'll just check later on. Here, we need to get the ID. Let's get the ID here of food. Because when we undo everything, we should jump back to this original food, sales food tab. I'm going to grab this. Put it in there. Save that. I need to check why this is here. This might be a function. So I'm not sure why it's responding as the way it is. But that's all right. We'll see. Refresh. Let's see if we get an error. Press something, go to checkout, we got that. Now I say cancel this, all right, it does not jump. And it doesn't cannot define parent note. Of uh, tab 64, am I correct? What is this here? Food tab, uh, no, that one is fine. So here, if. Order this back to full tab document. Oh, all right. Sorry, mistaken. I've written here something incorrectly. Save that. Refresh again. Let's try one more time. All right, did it work properly? If I click on it, yeah, all right. Let's close this one for now. Then remove. There we are. So now we jump back. Go again here. Check out. Check out works. And then I say clear. There we are. Every time we jump back, so it avoids us now in making any kind of mistakes and this is basically what we need and now we're very close to what we need to do with our final tab here is the uh basically the uh, what is that the receipt that's the one we will have to do as well and then next customer button